All right, so we've discussed the characteristics of connective tissue along with the characteristics of epithelium. So just as a reminder, connective tissue is a connector. So it's always going to be sandwiched between different tissues. And so we would never find an apical surface uh, along the side of a histology image here. And then remember that connective tissue is diverse. It, it is a diverse group. And so it has a variety of different backgrounds, which we call ground substance. And so our connective tissue is going to have a variety of cells and then a variety of fibers within, as well as a variety of backgrounds. This is very different from our epithelium. Our epithelium was pretty much just one type of cell, just arranged in an organized manner. Whereas as you can see, connective tissue is very disorganized. So let's first start off with the different types of cells that we see in connective tissues. Let's first talk about actual connective tissue cells. And first we have our most common one, which is our fibroblast. Our fibroblast is going to do a lot of the work of maintaining our connective tissue in that it secretes that extracellular matrix. Notice in this image, this uh, fibroblast is producing a fiber here, this purple fiber, which we'll talk about in just a sec. The second type of connective tissue cell are these yellow ones, which are adipocytes. Adipocytes sound like adipose. Adipose is fat. And so our adipocytes are fat cells. They store our fat. And then the other four cells here, one, two, three, four, they, um, oh, I see my pictures in the way. They uh, are white blood cells. So notice that our connective tissue has a lot of blood, a lot of vascularity to it. Another uh, difference between connective tissue and epithelium. So macrophages are an immune system response. They are big, they do phagocytosis, and so they're going to eat up any foreign debris or cells, dead cells. Plasma cells are an adaptive immunity response, and what they do is they uh, produce and secrete antibodies, which act like little markers to attack foreign substances. Mast cells are another immune system response, what they do is they secrete histamine. If you've ever taken like Zyrtec before, you know it's an antihistamine. And what histamine does is it, um, it uh, causes inflammation, you know, and sometimes inflammation can be um, uncomfortable, especially if it's caused by like dog hair or something. And then last we have leukocytes, which are just our typical white blood cells. We wouldn't usually find this in normal connective tissue, not a lot of it at least. However, when we have an infection of any sort, leukocytes can travel and uh, they respond to infection really well. So they can actually travel in and out of our blood vessels. They do something special so that they can go to the very specific spot of infection. So those are our cells. And then we have the actual extracellular matrix. And so the way I like to think about connective tissue is like different desserts, you know, like we have a category of food that is desserts, but our desserts can range for, in consistency from, you know, um, boba tea on the really liquidy side to maybe jello or ice cream and then um, cake, cookies, brownies on the kind of denser side. Um, this is kind of like connective tissue. Connective tissue, they're all considered connective tissues. However, the extracellular matrix, the ground substance, the background within the extracellular matrix can be very diverse. And so we have ground substances that are very fluid, for example, like plasma in blood. Um, and then we have some that are kind of semi-fluid or gelatinous, like in fat tissue or in um, areolar connective tissue. And then we have stuff that is more on the dense side like um, cartilage or our calcified bone. And so our ground, system, ground substance is variable. And what it is is it allows for exchange of nutrients between those, all those types of cells that we just discussed. So it's a support system for our cells. 
So that's the background in this histology image. But then notice that there are a lot of different fibers in here. And so we can see that there's purple ones, there's yellow ones uh, right here, and then there's pink ones in the back. And so we find three different types of fibers in connective tissue. The first and the most common are these large purple ones. They are the largest fibers, and they are the strongest of the fibers. Um, they, allow, they, they provide strength to our connective tissue, and they are most abundant. The second type are the yellow. They are smaller than our collagen, so they're not nearly as strong. However, they're special in that they are elastic, so they can stretch, but they snap back into place. And then the third type are our smallest, which are called the reticular fibers. They kind of look kinky within your histology images. Um, and they're much thinner, uh, and they're produced by a special cartilage, but they do provide support for our uh, connective tissue.